One of the UK's largest school photo firms has apologised after it offered families the option of class pictures with or without children with complex I needs. I can't believe this. Uh, parents in Aberdeenshire have expressed their anger after being sent two versions of a class photo to choose from, with one excluding classmates with additional needs. Well, the mother of one of those children, who was excluded from a photo, said it was heartbreaking to see her child effectively erased from history. It's just horrible language, isn't it? Uh, Tempest Photography says what, is, what happened is not standard procedure and is taking the matter very seriously. Well, earlier we spoke to Natalie Pinner, whose daughter Erin was amongst those excluded from a set of photographs. She gave us this exclusive interview. Obviously got our class photos for our children and um, my eldest got two versions of that class photo delivered and in that um, email there was two options, one which included her and one that didn't. Um, and on kind of further investigation with the photography company, um, they consciously decided to give two options for two classes. Um, one which included the kids with complex needs or, and one that didn't. What is it about Erin that, that means she has complex needs and wasn't in that original shot? Um, so, I mean, specifically, you know, you can see in the photo um, that, that I've provided, you know, she wears ear defenders because she has sensory, mm. you know, sensitivities. And she also, um, you know, wasn't in school uniform that day. She, she, she might not sit and focus in the same way that other children do. So, um, yeah, she appears slightly different to some of the other children in the class. Um, but she is part of a mainstream school that focuses mm. on inclusion. So there's absolutely no reason why she should be excluded from it or the parents should be given the option to exclude her from it. And Natalie, I mean, like, like all parents with their um, differently able children, um, you, you obviously encourage them to, to think that, that, you know, they are just like everybody else, there's nothing wrong or different about them. So how did this make you, you both feel? I mean, how did Erin feel about this? Um, Erin's not aware, thankfully. Um, that is kind of the saving grace of this, that she hasn't had to understand that effectively um, people gave the, the, the choice of whether she exists in this school or not. Um, but um, I think it's more about like what message are we sending as adults mm. to all of the kids in the school? You know, we've had to discuss it with her younger sister so that she understands what's going on, how, you know, that makes her sibling feel. Is, it, is her sister, is her elder sister any less worthy um, of a place in society? Mm. Which is effectively the message that's being sent by, by providing this option. Yeah, because it's, I mean, it, it, in a way, our hearts sort of go out to the parents and the children directly involved in this. Mm. But in fact, in a way, as you, as you sort of point out, we need to be thinking about those um, so-called non-complex children and what they're being taught as a result mm. of this. Yeah, I mean, you know, ultimately, you know, an adult made this decision um, and in fact, I've had so many messages from other parents. I've had children at the school writing songs and performing them and sending it to us as a family, absolutely outraged by what's happening. Another child wanting to use their martial arts skills if they'd have known in, in the in the photography session. Um, there are lots of children who actually I think we could all learn from. Um, it, what it, what it um, signifies to me is a kind of wider issue across society. And, you know, you see some of the comments and hate, even just from the, the media about this. It, I think there's a lot to be done. We are far from an inclusive society. And if we want to move towards having schools that allow inclusivity, then we need to be looking at what <coughs> suppliers we work with and whether they are indeed appropriate. Natalie, I'm just picking up on the, on the, on the phraseology you're using there. It's, a, it's as though Erin didn't exist. I mean, that, that, that's, that sounds heartbreaking to use that, that sort of terminology. Yeah, and, 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 it, and it's strongly worded, but at the end of the day, if she walks into someone's house who has that class photo up and her class are there, but she's not part of it, mm. what, what message does that say? And ultimately, you know, children who are looking back at their class photos in life, she didn't mm. exist. If people were given the option to book that photo, she didn't exist. And, you know, there's just something deeply sad about that. She's a human being. Uh, what have the school said... Um, and what have Tempest said? Um, because, I, I, I mean, my understanding is they sort of use lots of different photographers right around the country. So are they trying to say, well, this isn't their procedure, it's down to the photographer? 
Yes, I believe that um, blame is being put on the specific um, photographer. So the school have been incredible. The school um, jumped straight onto this, have condemned it, have, re have removed Tempest as a supplier for class photos as a result. They had the photo, the alternative pictures taken down so that they weren't available to purchase anymore. Um, they've been incredible and have kind of thought and, um, you know, emailed all of parents of the whole school to discuss and demonstrate how wrong this is and how it goes against their values. In terms of Tempest, um, they haven't reached out to me personally. <coughs> Um, the, the responses have been um, inconsistent to, for those who have tried to contact them. Obviously, I saw the statement that came out yesterday. Um, it does seem like they're, they're blaming a specific photographer. That may be the case. This could have been one individual's decision. For me, um, what I hope that they do as a result of this is consider their hiring practices. I'd like to know what kind of diversity and inclusion policies they have in terms of who they bring on, especially when they're working in vulnerable schools. You know, a Boyne Primary is a special needs hub it, it's where some of our most children, vulnerable children go, and uh, it's really important that as a company, if we're going to hire this as a supplier, that they have, you know, processes and policies and education in place to protect those young children. That's what I hope comes and out that, of this. I think that's so important because this isn't the first time it's happened, is it? There was another little girl who had cerebral palsy and was in a wheelchair. She was airbrushed from the school photo. And another little girl in Derbyshire, this one was, um, she was told to, she wears very thick glasses, she was told to remove her glasses because her mummy would like a photo of her looking pretty. How does that make yeah. you feel? It's, I mean, I, it's, it's shocking. I can't even properly integrate what you're saying, <laughs> integrate what I'm reading, and the number of parents who've reached out to me directly, thanking me for speaking up, and who've had similar experiences, you know, physical attributes to children being called out and asked to be put away or hidden, um, and, you know, and things actually being airbrushed out of photos um, because they're inconvenient or what, unsightly, or I don't know what... Mm. I can't. I can't really describe what word the photographer thinks is is you know no, un no. unseeable in these children. Mm. Well, look, I tell you what. Every cloud has a bit of a silver lining, and at least this means we are talking about this, and that could mean it never happens again. Oh, hopefully, I hope so. That 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 is the only reason why you know I'm here having this conversation with you. I think we all can learn from this hopefully we all can learn a lesson and just you know one champion for these kids this isn't the only kind of example of exclusion that these children face mm. they face it every single day the hidden battles that these children have um just to be part of society so let's all make it a little bit easier on them if we can yeah natalie Pinnett, really it's well. really good to talk to you this morning thanks very much thank you thank you emotional. Um, in a statement, um, an Aberdeenshire council spokesman said, we are aware that following a boy in primary school's recent school class photographs linked to purchases, the pictures included images with and without complex need provision pupils. Boyne is an inclusive school and every single child should be included, engaged and involved in their learning and school experiences. Well, the company involved, Tempest Photography, said recently, after capturing a class group photograph, one of our photographers took additional images of the class group, which admitted some members of the class from the photograph. We deeply regret any upset this has caused and would like to sincerely apologise to the parents and children affected. I, why would you? Why? Why would you do that? I mean, the children, for God's sakes! I don't oh. know. Yeah, I don't know, I... and I just look. There's been a cock up somewhere. Yeah. Um, and at least, and I do think it is important. It's high. No one would have been trying to be nasty about no. it. No. But it just goes to show th how we tend to think still about you, people with a disability. You know what? I think the more we talk about being inclusive mm. and and taking everybody into account, the less inclusive we actually become as a society. Mm. Maybe just me. Um, well, at least we're talking about children yes. in all of this. Yeah. So Because that, that matters. They've got their whole lives ahead of them. Yeah. I'm mean, that poor little girl being told she'd look prettier without her glasses on. How do you say that to a six-year-old? Oh. oh.